In this video, we're gonna do an intro to sketch blocks. Coming from an AutoCAD background, you may have created a block before. It's basically where you take several sketch entities and combine them as one sketch entity. So you're creating basically a single modular unit of that sketch entity. And this is used all the time in the past in AutoCAD and other programs where you need to create a bolt pattern or something like that. You need to move it around or you need to use it in several different places. It's a good way to create the references and copy it and move it around without having dangling entities or having underdefined parts. In SolidWorks, it goes one step further and it allows you to do some pretty special things like create motion. And we can actually simulate these in a motion study and apply forces and springs and things like that, which we'll get into later in this lesson. Right now, I just want to go over how to create a block, what blocks are, and how to use them, and a little bit of basic information here. So in the sketch, let's just start by, I'm going to just draw a rectangle, and I'm going to draw a circle over here, and I'm going to add a line to this circle. So right now, everything on the screen is underdefined. There's some references that are automatically attached to this rectangle, some relations that give us a vertical and a horizontal relation. These are underdefined. They're free to float around and move around and things like that. We can add relations between these and we can give them dimensions and so on. So let's start by giving these guys a dimension. I'm just gonna make that three inches. Let's make this guy two inches by five inches. Okay, so right now these dimensions are, let's consider them local to the sketch entities. There's nothing that is relating them to the origin. They're just kind of floating around, but now these entities are a fixed dimension. Let's draw one more rectangle just for the fun of it here. So this rectangle is completely underdefined. There's no location on any of the points and there's no dimensions here. So you can see it's kind of free to float around here. We can do things like we can move this guy around and we can add relations between other components. And that is going to allow us to move things around as a unit. We can move them around and we can kind of fill them out and make sure that things are working how they're supposed to. So let's go back and we've got our dimension on this guy and this guy's underdefined and this guy has some dimensions, but everything here is still underdefined. If we select these entities, we can go to our blocks menu and we can make a block out of that. So you notice on the left hand side, we have all of the sketch entities that are included in that block, center point, the construction lines, the outside lines. We also have an option for insertion point. And this is helpful when you're saving blocks or using them in multiple instances. You can drag the insertion point around, for instance, snap it to the center. So it's a real handy feature there that you can do when you're creating these blocks and saving them. So let's hit OK, and let's take a look at what we've created. The first thing you'll notice is that our sketch entities are now gray and our dimensions have disappeared. If you look at the feature tree, you'll notice that below our sketch, we now have this sub feature that's block 4-1. These are gonna be named depending on the number of blocks that you've created in your part and your assembly. And you can rename them just like you can with your sketches and your features. But you'll notice that we can still move this guy around. It's not located anywhere. In particular, it's kind of floating around in our sketch. We do something like fix this bottom left corner. We can rotate this thing around. So we no longer have that horizontal or vertical reference or relation that was created when we were using it inside the sketch when it was still blue. Because those relations were based on our coordinate system. So now this entity is basically free. The only thing that's true, for instance, if we double click on this, and we start to edit it, the only thing that's true is these dimensions hold true. These dimensions are internal to our sketch block. You also notice that we have a few different things now. We have an exit sketch block as opposed to the exit sketch when we're editing our block. So this guy's kind of free to float around. I fixed its left hand point, but let's go ahead and delete that relation. So he's floating around. Let's go ahead and take this circle make a block out of that as well. You'll notice that this make block is pretty important. It pops up on this context menu. So it's gonna be there right at your fingertips whenever you're using it. And again, now it shows the entities that are inside that block. We also have the option to use our quick key as we talked about. So I'm gonna use the B key on the keyboard and create that block. So we can also use our toolbar that's floating around here. I'm gonna make a block. So you can see things are kind of floating around. There's a relation that's floating around. Let's turn those relations on so we can see what's going on here. There's a horizontal relation between these points. Let's go ahead and delete that, and move these guys around. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna take this circle, I'm just gonna snap it to the origin. So now you'll notice that I can kind of rotate this guy around here. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this endpoint, I'm gonna make it coincident with that. So right now, I'm gonna turn these relations back off. I'm gonna rotate this thing around. 
So you can see that box is following it around. The dimensions that we applied and any relations we applied internal to that block hold true, but nothing inside of our part is overriding any of that. So we can still come in and we can do things like apply a horizontal relation. So now when we rotate this around, that box is going to be staying horizontal, but it's still following that path here. And we can do things also like snap these guys together. So you can see that we can move components around. You can snap that on there. And you can see we can create some very interesting and sometimes complicated motions just by using these sketch blocks. We can also take these sketch blocks and save them out. These options are all on here. You can also come up here to our blocks toolbar and use save block. So we can create these blocks. Let's call this one save block. And now I save that out to a folder. We also have the option to insert a block. So you can see that we have the three blocks that we've created in our sketch here. You can also browse. Let's go in here and let's find our save block that we created. So now we have the save block here. I move that around. We can place multiple instances of this inside of our sketch. And you can see there's an option here to link to file. So if you create a sketch, you create a sketch block, you create a part, you save that out, you can now create a link to that file. And this is important when you're doing things like creating a mounting flange. For instance, we have a NEMA 23 motor flange here. So if you're using this flange on lots of parts and assemblies that you're creating, and you want to link to it in case you ever make any changes to that file. Let's say you create this sketch block and you start creating these parts and let's say you have dozens of parts created already and someone notices that the hole size is actually a tapped hole and not a passing hole and you need to go back and modify all those parts. Well, rather than having to go back individually to all the parts and assemblies that you created and finding those references or creating a SOLIDWORKS scheduler event to do that for you, you can go back to that original file, that original block, modify that by double clicking on it and going into that block, modifying these dimensions, and then saving that back out. And then that's gonna trickle down and go back to all your parts and assemblies. It's gonna to link to that file. So this is a great way to create some sort of standard, some sort of industry standard, like these NEMA motor mounts, or something internal to your company. So these are great tools to use, not only as blocks that you can use for motion and simulation, that sort of thing, but also for creating some sort of standards and some sort of standard file type where you don't have to insert a part, you can insert these common sketches. The last thing I wanna show you before we end our intro is the explode option. So when we create these sketch blocks, once we select one, we have an explode option here. Now explode will allow you to back out of that sketch block. So for instance, this circle here, if we want to explode that block, it's still in our sketch and the dimensions still hold true, any relations that we applied to it, for instance, the center relation, while it was a sketch block, that's gonna be broken. But it's important that the sketch entities are still in our file. So for instance, this NEMA motor that we created and that we inserted, we can explode that. We take this sketch box and we have to explode it twice because it's a block inserted into a sketch. But now we've broken the link to that file. If you have one instance that needs to change but all the rest need to stay the same, you can break that link to the file if you added that link when you created the block, or you can just simply modify it however you want to. So these are really handy tools to have and really handy tools that you can create by using these block tools.